Hey there, it's Elina, your friend the nuclear physicist, and today we're making a highly requested video. I'm going to be explaining in a simple and easy to understand way what SMRs are, small modular reactors, as well as comparing them with the reactors we are currently using. Without further ado, let's get into it. So in this video, we are going to firstly describe the definition of a small modular reactor and what it means, then dive into the flexibility of those reactors, discuss their economics aspect, further on discuss their safety and non-proliferation, as well as finish with the current status of SMRs around the world. So it's important to begin by defining the acronym small modular reactors and what each words mean and why are they named like that. So small comes from literally the size of the reactors. The size is going to be much smaller compared to a reactor type three, generation three that we are currently using. Hence the word small is to indicate that. Modular means that the reactors are going to be actually factory made. So they are going to be made in a factory side. They're going to be mass produced and then shipped to the different locations that the reactor is going to be built on. This is different from the reactors we are currently using where they are all pretty much one of a kind prototype and they are built on site. So where they're going to be operating and uh, being situated for the rest of their lifetime. And of course the word reactor comes from the fact that this is a reactor and the way it produces energy is by fissioning uranium-238. According to the definition of the International Atomic Energy Agency, a small modular reactor is a reactor that produces up to 300 megawatt electric power compared to the reactors that we are currently using that are around three times that value. It is also important to mention that there are several types and designs of small modular reactors that have been proposed around the world and the most common ones are reactors that operate in the thermal spectrum, fast spectrum meaning fast neutrons that will fission the natural uranium-238, uh, reactors that are gas-cooled as well as reactors that are molten salt based. Moving on to the flexibility of small modular reactors and this comes mostly from the fact that they are modular that as we said means that they are built in a factory and shipped after all afterwards in the location that they are going to be installed. This gives the ability for them to be shipped in all parts of the world, especially in areas that are remote and uh, not connected to a particular energy grid and can help those particular areas produce the energy that, are, that is necessary for them. Another advantage of their flexibility is the fact that they can be installed in power plants that are currently built and in operation and therefore it can increase the energy production of those power plants if this is for example what a country needs. Also, SMRs are very flexible, meaning that we can adjust the amount of energy they are producing based on the need and the demand, and therefore they are a very good choice in supporting energy uh, production methods that are, for example, dependent on weather, such as renewable energies. Another interesting feature when it comes to their flexibility is the fact that you can scale up easily a factory that is uh, based on small modular reactors. Let's say, for example, that at first uh, one a uh, factory is building a couple of reactors based on their need. Later on, if the need increases, you can install one or two or several, several more modules that will increase the energy production of the particular factory without necessarily building another one or increasing the, the cost in any other way. Lastly, besides uh, energy and electricity production, small modular reactors can also be used to produce heat to aid in hydrogen production as well as water desalination. Moving on to the economics aspect of the small modular reactor and uh, this also stems from mainly the fact that they are modular, meaning that since they are built in a factory, they are all basically a replica of one prototype that was designed, that was licensed and now they're basically reproduced based on that first design. This not only reduces the time that it needs for them to be manufactured, produced and sent to the location that they're going to be built on, but it also makes them very much cheaper because you don't need to go through the licensing process once again, like we are currently doing with every reactor that is currently built that is generation three reactor, which is, as I said, pretty much a one of a kind. Every reactor that we now have is a little bit different from any other reactor that we are currently having. So it kind of makes it hard to license or use the same licensing method for all of those reactors since they have differences and this is something that SMRs is trying to eliminate. Another important feature when it comes to the economics of the small modular reactors is their refueling. A lot of these reactors are planning to be refueled every three to seven years and a lot of designs for small modular reactors have a, let's say a plan to be refueled every 25 years meaning that throughout the whole operation of the small modular reactor they will need pretty much no refueling. They're going to start 
with a particular core with a set of uranium rods and you are going to finish the lifetime after 25 years without refueling. This is not only important for the economics aspect, the fact that you don't need to produce new fuel or even, you know, account for the cost of the refueling itself and the time that the reactor is going to be turned off while the refueling is happening, but it's also very important for our next point, which is going to be the non-proliferation, when it makes it harder for any kind of non-proliferation issues if, since the, uh, let's say, fuel is always kept inside the reactor core. It is also important to mention that the SMRs are very favorable for generation 4 type of reactors. For example, as I said in the beginning, reactors that are operating in the fast spectrum of neutrons therefore can utilize uranium-238, which is the most abundance of natural uranium that we have and currently not utilizing with the generation 3 reactors, hence reducing the cost drastically and not needing, for example, enrichment of uranium in order to operate and produce energy by fission. Lastly, it is important to mention that in terms of land use, SMRs need around 10% of the land that the current generation 3 reactors are requiring in order to be built and manufactured. Moving on to the safety and non-proliferation aspect of the small modular reactors, and here it is important to mention that the design of SMRs uh, will have them placed underground in pools, and this type of design would uh, be very beneficial against uh, some sort of uh, terrorist attack or natural disaster since those reactors are not really on the surface so they are more protected when they are going to be underground. Another aspect which we previously mentioned in the economics is the fact that the refueling time is much uh, longer and is not let's say one or two years like it is in the reactor types that we are currently using but it can be maybe up to 25 years for certain reactor types. This is also good for the economics as we said but it's very important for the safety and non-proliferation aspect as well since the uranium, the let's say radioactive uh, fuel that exists in the reactor is not really coming out of it until uh, it's being decommissioned at the end of the 25 years. It is also important to mention that uh, SMRs are going to rely solely on passive safety systems. That is what makes them possible to be so small, is the fact that they don't really have many active systems, systems that require human intervention in order to be turned on in case of a disaster or in case of a malfunction of the reactor and you, you need your safety systems to kick in. So in this case, in SMRs, those systems will be passive, meaning that they work on gravity, natural convection or negative temperature coefficients, meaning that in case of an accident, in case of an increase in power or in case of an increase in the reactivity inside the reactor, the reactor has the inherent feature to shut down by itself without the need of an external aid or active uh, safety system to do so. Lastly, Many small modular reactors are planned to use uh, new, innovative, uh, advanced fuels that are going to have longer burn-up and they are going to be used inside the reactor core, as we said, for a longer time, meaning that when they come out, actually the radioactive waste that is left is much less than the one that is currently produced from the reactor types that we have. So now you would naturally ask, if SMRs are so good, do we have them? Are we already planning to build them or is it just let's say, in theory and still in research. Well, in fact, we already have one small modular reactor operating and it is a floating modular reactor. It is in Russia. It's called Academic Lomonosov and it started operating just last month in October 2022. And it is a really a great step forward and opening the door and paving the way for the SMRs around the world. China is also constructing the first land-based small modular reactor in the Lingon-1 nuclear power plant and this reactor started in July 2021 and is planned to start operating in 2026. Overall, small modular reactors are kind of a mini version of the reactors that we are currently using. They are more flexible, safer and are going to be cheaper than the reactors that we currently have. And it's something that I personally would like to see more around the world and hopefully to be built very soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video and what would you like me to explain next. Don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my videos. It's been Elena, your friendly nuclear physicist, and until next time, see you soon.